right then. Um, thank you for joining us for the 2021 Go Virtual Career Pathway Conference. I'm Lena Poplin Vermontes. I work at the county office and I will be your room host today. Um, please feel free to go ahead and ask any questions in the chat and either Madeline or Melanie will answer those and, and I guess respond whether out uh, whether the questions are going to be out or if you guys just want to type it in there. Um, and now I'd like to introduce you to Melanie Brandt and Madeline Brian reed from Cajon Valley and Union School District with the presentation, Using Student Strength, Interest, and Values to Begin a New Conversation. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. So in today's um, presentation, participants will learn how to use the student strengths, interests, and values to begin a new conversation with them on how to approach their education and life. By using the students' RIASEC letters, we will highlight some occupational options and help them to reframe their thinking into a growth mindset. No longer focusing on academic reviews, the mind shift will be on students connecting their education with future careers by utilizing the world of work curriculum. This training was created for elementary and middle school counselors and educators, but all are welcome. All right. And so we are gonna give you some resources today that you can um, integrate into your practice as soon as you are ready to. But getting started, we just wanna kind of know quickly who we have joining us. Um, if you could just kind of drop, we see your name, but your name, maybe position and district or company you're with. And what level of RIASEC knowledge do you have? And it's on a one through four scale, one being never heard of it, and all the way down to four, I integrated into my practice. So if you could uh, drop that in there, that would be great. Awesome. I'm gonna drop the presentation in again in case we had anybody else join. Great, so we have some uh, using RISEC in the Laguna Beach district, excellent. So the familiar with that. Somebody from the MAC program here, awesome. We of course integrated, we're a level four because we integrated into our practice both as a, a classroom teacher and program specialist. And then um, you'll find out how Madeline um, integrates it into her counseling practice. And our um, third presenter had couldn't make it this afternoon. She's an elementary counselor, Janet Gilbert, who also will be sharing some of her uh, strategies and resources she integrates into the elementary level of her counseling practice. So we have some level ones, never heard of it, for some threes, all the way to fours. So we have everything in between. So we will cover so you at least know what it is, and then some ways that you can integrate it into your practice, whether you're in the counselor, you're a, an administrator, program specialist, or coach, um, career development coach, and possibly even just a parent. It's very good for even parenting. All right. So real quick, um, just something that struck me recently. I was kind of reading some um, career development articles and, you know, this kind of stood out. All children are special and uh, unique and have strengths, interests, and values that are needed in the world. And the earlier they understand those, the better. And that's where any and all adults in their lives can support that process. Classroom teachers, counselors, parents, um, coaches, anybody involved in a child's life um, to, to kind of tailor them and help them support them to those strengths and interests and, and how are those gonna affect their future um, career. So we all know our children are special and unique and let's, let's um, understand that and have them understand that as well. So just a little excerpt from an article I was reading, the whole article there is uh, tagged if you are interested. <clears throat> and there you go. So um, if you click into our, um, our presentation, uh, Melanie added a link where it says SIBJ questions. So there's more than the questions that you see on the slide, but go ahead and pick one of these questions, whatever you want and share with us um, either what strengths do you appreciate in others or what is the most interesting place you've ever visited or when did you do something wrong? What, what, is something that you did to fix the situation and what are five jobs that require people to be really brave so just pick one of those questions you can add the letter that you decided to answer so s is for strengths i is for interest b is for values and j is for job awareness but go ahead and um 
Answer one of those questions in the chat, write down if you did S, I, V, or J. And if you wanna do this activity with others, go ahead and um, click the link in the slide and you'll get all the questions. Okay, we have someone that went to Pemba in Tanzania. Oh, awesome. And that's an interest question. V, I go back to the person and I tell them, I'm sorry, I can admit when I make a mistake. So that's when you did something wrong. I is Alaska for interest. And the PDF with many questions are there. We do have cards part of the program, but for just for your reference, these are good, um, you know, if it's class meetings or small meetings, just to get the students thinking about other questions and what's your favorite color, what do you like to eat? It, it kind of has them thinking um, differently um, so that you can get to know them better. Yes, we have I, Brazil. So a few interests. S is trust. What strengths do you appreciate in others? S, patience. Yes, I appreciate patience too. <laughs> awesome. All right. So career development is a human process. Um, we could take any of the tests that are required by everybody and um, it won't tell us what we would be good at as far as like being good in school. You know, like I wasn't very good at taking the SAT or the ACT, but it doesn't define who I am, right? So why, why, wow, well, why now? Okay. All right. So we have it's the WOW stands for World of Work, and it's a career development um, curriculum that's integrated as early as kindergarten. And you, many people ask, you know, why would you do that as young as five, five years old? And really, it becomes that the teachers also have stake in it, and it starts in the classroom. So as we know, you know, the landscape of work changes. And thinking about today, there's many careers that didn't exist when we were younger. I mean, just off the top of my head, you think of an Uber driver, um, you can supplement your income, you can and use it as a career, but it's flexible timing. It's kind of um, something different that didn't exist. We couldn't strive to be that when we were younger. And that really, we want to bring out those every potential in students based on their strengths, interests, and values, and them to understand what that is, and exposure to potential careers. Students know and understand the careers that they see every day. You know, they, they go to the doctor, they know doctor, nurses, they know nurses, they see their teachers, firefighters, police, wonderful careers. That's just what they're, they're, they're used to. Um, to. But to have a conversation and show them that there's other careers out there is what we really strive to do. And again, the teacher can talk about it. The counselor can talk about it. And really also, if you look at some of those pictures there, you know, the drone um, mechanic or operator, a doctor, um, looks like a, a solar wind engineer and then a mechanic. We also um, talk about that there's dignity in all work and that everybody has a place. And if you really love what you do and you go to work every day loving that, that's what's most important. And at the end of the day, you will be more successful and make more money if you're really doing something that's what you're passionate about. And so that's where the exposure is really important for our students. Um, my little background, I am from a classroom teacher and the world of work came into my life, so to speak, uh, about my 13th year in the career. I was a fourth grade teacher at a computer science school. I had spent 12 years of my career as a special ed teacher and stepped out to do a um, computer science magnet. And my second year as a fourth grade teacher, rolled to work RIASEC. Really the RIASEC component entered into my classroom practice. There's my beautiful fourth grade students who today are now eighth graders. And every year I loved what I did. I've always wanted to be a teacher, but there was something unique and different about this class. Um, you know, the RIASEC was uh, an everyday um, 
piece of our communication. We talked about it. We used it. We referenced it. They understood who they were. They also understood their classmates. And they no longer looked at each other based on what they maybe knew since kindergarten about. We all know who's the chatty ones, who's the, the naughty ones, who's the challenging ones, the smart ones, the, the athletic ones. But now they really focused more on what are my classmates' talents? What are their interests? And how can we kind of take that further and work on that? And so the little guy there who computer coded in, um, was it Minecraft? He coded WOW and he came and showed me. And looking back, the last day of school, filing report cards in the CUMES, saw a stack of papers, was curious, what are all these documents in his CUME here? Um, and he had had 13 referrals since kindergarten. I had no idea. He had gotten zero that fourth grade year, had gone to school with the same kids all these years, but he was no longer seen as the as through his, the lens of his deficits, but now through the lens of what were his strengths. And he was an amazing computer programmer. He had a place in the classroom and that went to other students as well. Some of our lower performing academic students, they were brilliant artists and the students were fighting over her talents when they had to do art projects and, and maybe present something. So it really changed um, my view and teaching and style and um, which uh, prompted into this position to leave the classroom to help coach and support teachers. Um, integrating into their classroom practice was a very difficult decision, but I knew I could help more students and teachers, but I always look back on these students. I think this was teacher appreciation day. They're now, like I said, in eighth grade and um, really came back and, and love, love what I do and, and see the difference for students and children. So if you weren't aware, this, the counselor to student, the student to counselor ratio in the US is not the greatest. Um, especially in California, I think we are one of the worst as far as numbers where counselors have up to 400 students, if not more. Um, and so trying to teach and implement career, which is one of our standards, would be really, really challenging. So who are our coaches? Our career coaches at our district in Cajon Valley Union is um, anybody teachers, teachers that teach preschool to eighth grade, the local high school, um, all the special ed classrooms, career development electives, the fa family engagement office, parents and grandparents. We've transformed our library so that librarians are involved and they can meet a pro, organize their books by the RIASEC. Um, they do San Diego Workforce Partnership um, we've also created a develop, career development launch pad for students and families to access tools and resources for career exploration. So the photos that you're looking at, the photo on the left is um, what the library looks like at Cajon Valley Middle School, and on the right is the coaches that help build it. So anybody could help us with this kind of work, which makes our job a lot more helpful. And looking at the little careers research, um, some of the top components is interests. So if, they, um, if you're interested in what you're doing, you're going to perform better. Parent involvement or guardian, whoever's raising the child involvement is important, as well as career exposure and talk. So meeting professionals in the field, which we've seen now um, with Zoom technology and us kind of pushing forward that through the pandemic, we can actually get to professionals a little easier on site through that platform or even through you know, our technology on our phones, through FaceTime calling. So really even talking to a professional out on the field is, has shown that it's very, very important and very um, connected for the students to see that is something I wanna do or perhaps maybe not quite what I wanna do based on their values. So it's a really important component with the parent involvement and then looking at the interest lens. So we often ask, you know, how does a child aspire to a career they don't know exists? And that's where the exposure piece comes in, whether it's through the Meta Pro um, conversations with teachers, them researching. We've added, like uh, Madeline mentioned, our career development launch pads at our middle schools. 
we've created, um, some of our middle schools have career exploration electives that also coexist with the support of the counselor, but the teacher, a teacher is running those programs. And so just the exposure through the RIASEC lens and then through simulating and then meeting the professional becomes really important. So that's the question we ask and we guide us through our practice. Our students, they can, these are some of the careers that they might simulate through uh, kindergarten through eighth grade. It's a variety based on each RIASEC code so that every child, every year, every grade has a, a six different experiences that's on one from each of the RIASEC. And going back to looking at the variety, you can see there's, you know, post 12 uh, secondary options as far as high school graduation, AA degree, the trades, um, bachelor's, master's, PhDs, and everything in between on the job training. So it's not just based college, it's college and career and what's best for each child based on their, their strengths, interests, and values. And that's where I mentioned before, dignity and all work. And even, you know, college is the route for some because that's what their aspirations are. And that's, you know, as a teacher, college was necessary. Um, to have that bachelor's degree and then to the credential, but also promoting our trades for some of our learners and as well as the army and the military. The military is also can be a choice based on a student's interest. And I would like somebody who wants to be in the military to be defending our country. So we want to make sure that dignity and all work and that really matters um, for our children and it's okay. <clears throat> We ground in the self-awareness component where it's based on strengths, which are natural talents. You know, how, what are we naturally good at? Some of us are naturally good at maybe picking up a sport easily, striking up conversations. We have, you know, people we know that are just brilliant in math. It comes easily to them. It's a natural talent. And that interest component we speak with is usually connected to our RIASEC. And how are those six letters and those traits and characteristics, how do they connect to the students? And that we have all the students do some activities and I'll share some of those with you today, that they claim three. What three do you most connect with? And how does that fit into what you're doing? And that last one, the values. You know, what brings you to work every day? What are some areas that, um, that you like and enjoy coming to work? You know, do you like working with other people? Do you like working alone? Outdoors, indoors. Do you like, now we've added a lot of working from home. Is that a value for you? Or nope, I want to hop back and go to the office. So understanding how somebody likes to work and seeing that as an early age, I work better alone. I work better with group. I work better with a partner. If our students can kind of start to recognize that, the better for them. So adding that dimension of the values is really critical as well. So we ground in that strengths, interests, values, and we'll show you how that can integrate into your practice. We usually start with the Holland Ryasek. There's an article there that is uh, Nature and Power of Interest to kind of see that James Round and Dr. Sue studied the typology of the Ryasek. It was designed by John Holland. Uh, he was an army a military. Um, when they finished in their military service, he placed them in jobs. And so he started to recognize when he really had a conversation and really connected what their interests were and what their strengths were and placing them in careers, there was more job satisfaction, which led him to start to research what are those six letters that what are they most connected to and what are some of the traits and characteristics. And so you can do some more reading on that as well. Um, so we're going to talk a little more about RISEC. Each one is connected to, you know, the realistic that's hands-on doing things and, you know, working with machines, plants, and animals, your investigative thinkers. Okay. So like your problem solvers, really strong in math and science, artistic creators. So that artistic creative expression through music, dance, art, social, that's our social helpers, which can be a little confused with you know, being very social, outgoing, life of the party, but actually this is more in a helpers. So what I like to help people, which many of us as counselors and teachers, educators tend to fall with that social helping um, RIASEC. The enterprising persuaders, those are the more outgoing sales, like to talk, like to share ideas, risk takers, those are your uh, enterprising persuaders. And that last one is conventional. Those are our organizers. So thinking highly organized, keep things in track, 
you know, they, they value starting work at eight, having a break at 1030, lunch is at noon, you get off at five, and your day is pretty predictable. And so those are your more conventional organizers driven by data, math, science. Okay. And I, uh, on the left there, this is actually a student. This just happened last week, little uh, Lena there in fourth grade. So she was in the very first class of integrating RIASEC. And she claimed back then as a fourth grader, social, enterprising, artistic. And I happened to be visiting some classrooms last week and I hear, Mrs. Brand, is that you? And there was Lena, all grown up as an eighth grader at one of our middle schools. Got to talking, of course, you know, my first question is she was doing a, a career development activity is, well, what are your current rise set codes? And she now claims SAR. So the enterprising had changed to the realistic. And I said, well, what do you think? Why do you think that? So she said, well, I want to be a veterinarian. And I know that the more hands-on becomes with being a veterinarian. So I, I used other things. I've learned to to do some things, I, I watch my neighbor's dogs. I do more things with my hands because I know that's part of being um, a veterinarian. And back in fourth grade, she still then wanted to be a veterinarian. So it was really great to see that she could, her, her RISEC did change, which that's going to happen with our students, but she also could speak to why it changed and what did she need to do and what changed with her in the past four years that she could tap into to grow into having and pursuing that veterinarian. And she also mentioned, you know, I really like animals, but not really people. So I'm gonna probably work with animals, Mrs. Brandt. So she was very, very aware of um, who she is um, in eighth grade. So really cool little story. We have a little, little girl there and as a fourth grader and now an eighth grader. So definitely made, uh, made an impact on me last week when I ran into her. And so we do start with, you know, for our students and some of you who, who rated yourselves as not familiar with the RIASEC. So what exactly is the RIASEC and what's my RIASEC? And so what we do is we have conversations with students. We go through some activities and talk with them if possible to let them know what are some traits and characteristics of all of these themes? What most can, do I connect with? Which one do I connect with the most? And then the next two I kind of connect with as well. We encourage students and teachers to do this at least once, but not even more times throughout the year, because it is going to change. Until you get a little older into adulthood, it might stabilize, but it's going to change, especially for our little ones. And just a little more information on what each one means. And so we have, these are some beautiful um, hand-drawn, posters that were done by the University of Buffalo, and this is even pre before we used RISEC as kind of our framework. There's actually some sketch videos that you could use and show to students if you um, have the time, and that's a, a what would fit your students' needs. And they, the sketch artist draws and somebody um, narrates the video so that you really can understand, okay, you see some pictures, I'm hearing it, what do I connect with? There's some great, um, these great videos, they, like I said, one minute, and you can kind of talk through them. For our younger students, because you're probably thinking, okay, a, a, a kindergartner, first grader, second grader, can't really understand those videos perhaps, and really can't go on and take any sort of online assessment, how would they understand and how would they claim their RIASEC or cl claim their three letters? So we even have hands-on exploration. So if you had a small group or you were supporting a classroom teacher with this process, you could make little activities. And this, these ones here are made for more of the primary, um, intermediate um, elementary students. And all the activities do connect to what the traits and characteristics of each RIASEC is. So you see Legos there. They have to solve a problem. They have to build a shelter for animals. Simple puzzles that they can do. They seem to enjoy that. They can create some sort of artwork. Um, working together as a team to build a bridge. So we've even incorporated some sort of STEM activities as well and problem solving. And our enterprising persuaders, they have to look through those old calendars, pick a picture and decide, well, what's the best place to travel or what's the best place, place to live in little, you know, inexpensive dollar store microphone, persuade their, their group mates to why that's the best place. And then our organizers, 
a bunch of little animals that they have to organize whichever way they want. Some do it by color, species. One time I saw a student with a long line of animals and I was a little perplexed, a little bit, you know, well, so what do you do here? He said, uh, I organized it by the food chain or by the, like the, the, the ant eats this and the who eats that. So just a brilliant thing. I'd never thought of that, never seen that. I've only seen it one time. So kids always come up with things that just, just blow your mind. So that's how we do it for our younger students. But we've also seen that our middle school and even high school and adult learners also like to continue to do the hands-on exploration, especially when they don't get to do these sorts of things. So we took it a few years ago into a middle school class thinking, you know, we might get run out of here. This is for babies fully engaged. You see the smiles on their face. They still love to play with Legos, even in the eighth grade. But we changed the little up the rigor a little bit and changed it to more um, connecting to the middle school population. We brought out the old microscopes that were hidden deep in a closet and they have to kind of look at the, the slides there. The young ladies there had to create a music dance video to some songs and they had to record it and they're replaying it there, having a good time laughing. So even our middle school high school and we've even taken these into many parent sessions and sometimes we can't get the parents to come back to the whole group because they're enjoying themselves so much. Um, these are just this is just an idea that you can make some rot have some rotations i've done this as young as fifth grade um, it's an exploration packet, um, but it talks about. Uh, what I like about it is why is that each activity that RIASEC? So you see this one here um, consists of building something out of an origami and creating that. So you're getting origami paper or even cutting the pa uh, regular paper to the exact square. But it talks about how each one is connected to that RIASEC. So the students really have to think about it and learn about it. And there's some reflection that they have to do. Just a really fun way to engage them extending the learning a little bit. They've kind of learned about it, they've done it, now what? So they are kind of understanding what it means. So it's not just to take a test, get three letter results, and then you're done. This is really having them think about it and learn. So there's some exploration, middle, high school, even adults, we've taken these into adult trainings as well. Everybody seems to have a good time enjoying themselves. Um, a few other just self-reporting. There's some more slides and videos there for you that has extensions of more information if you wanted to use these, this information to a small group of students um, or maybe into the classroom, um, even if you're having one-on-one -on -one conversations. And then there's some hands-on exploration ideas for the, the packet I had there and also for the elementary. Once students understand, or you yourselves understand, okay, I have the traits and characteristics, I understand what the letters are, um, a good foundation to that, you can go on and choose. There's several scientific inventories that are done that they can actually answer questions. There's the ONET interest profile, the San Diego Workforce Partnership has some, and even I found the University of Hawaii has one where it's a printout. So if you had to do it by hand and kind of have students um, answer it and then you can analyze it that way or add it up, it's a good one as well. But what they can do is they have, what did I think I claim myself by going through these activities? And what did the computer say? And they sometimes can be very similar or the same, but at the end, we want the students to claim their own. Why and understand, okay, this inventory told me I'm social, realistic, conventional. I reported I was social, conventional, artistic. So what do I want and what do I, can I say and connect with that can really say, you know what, I'm going to go with, I like more outdoors, hands-on activities. I am very organized, social helper. I love volunteering and helping others. So I'm going to claim I'm social, conventional, realistic. So two ways of doing it, but really going back to that human process. Our career development is a human process, not just giving them a test. Here's your three letters, and they don't know what to do with that. But now you know a little bit more about their interests. So really having that conversation is really important. Okay, and then just a little interest or strong predictors, kind of of that uh, career education and career choice, performance, and success. The ONET is a great resource. You can go in and, and click a career, and it'll actually kind of connect to some of the RISEC codes. So there's relevance to why the students need to know their RISEC codes. And even OSU, so Ohio State, Oklahoma, 
and Arizona that we know of actually align their majors by the two of the codes. So they can go on and say, okay, I'm social realistic. What are some uh, majors that could align to what my interests are? And you can kind of check that too. I went to check to see, well, if I was, if I knew I was social realistic, would I have gone into the right field? And sure enough, special education major was part of SR. So glad I made the right choice based on my interests. So there's just some information, talking points, resources that are out there um, that connect to that RISEC framework. Okay. So strengths is are a way to create a common language describing how we do what we do. It's a way for us to uncover what's our natural talents, what we like, like striking up a conversation, seeing a pattern in data, planning events. Uh, when we create a common language and focus on strengths based on what we know, we can focus on developing the things that we do naturally well. So let's think about the kids that might be struggling, that don't make the connection with school and work. What are their strengths? And I think what's important as educators, whether you're a teacher or a counselor, is how do we find that needle in the haystack of what that kid is actually good at? Are they a leader? Are they a persuasive person? Do they help? Do they like to help? Are they social? Do they include people? So um, it's important that we really try to look and find the strengths in every child, even the ones that seem to be making poor choices. So why strengths? If you have a minute, when you get a minute, go ahead and watch the video. And using the language of strengths is, this video just shows how, how by using the language of strengths, it's better that we're better to answer our in a job interview questions that'll, that align to the job that they're applying for. So understanding their talents and strengths to apply for jobs that they're interested in and connect to their SIV. So if you watch the video, um, you'll see them doing that. Then going back to that workplace values. So students understand, here are my interests, here's my natural talents. Now it's time to maybe decide on where I wanna do for a career. So let's talk about maybe a conventional organizer, for example. A computer programmer, kind of software developer is probably gonna claim high conventional. And so is a farmer, okay? So both jobs, very high conventional, needs those talents and strengths to stay organized, watch time, you know, and that sort of thing. But now what it comes down to the decision is, what are my workplace values? Do I wanna work behind a computer, perhaps by myself or a small team, in a cubicle or from home, or do I enjoy getting dirty, being outdoors, the weather, long hours, unstructured time, work till the work's done. So that's where we talk with students about what are your values and how does that come into play once they're making those decisions on um, that call that career choice and even college career choice. You know, where am I going to? What do I value um, outside of K to twelve? So understanding that is extremely important as well. So here are some resources for middle and high school counselors um, or anybody that works with students uh, intensely. If you click onto the, um, the link, it brings you to so many more resources um, that you can use when you have conversations with students. So the first one would be the interests, asking the students what they are interested in. Um, so if you click onto all that, you're able to, it guides you on how you have your conversations. Now I have students that I don't know, it's the end of the trimester at the end of the week. And so there's these kids that aren't scoring a certain way or getting certain grades. Um, they used to be the kids that were um, at risk of not graduating or promoting. And I'm not sure if your school district's doing the same thing but that gives me a list of kids that I need to focus on how to get them to link academics with their uh, future. So the first thing is asking them the interest conversation, like, hey, so what are you interested in? What is something that you think you like to do? And then going on to what are your strengths and values? What is something that you're good at? And the older kids seem to to have difficulties with that. I'm not sure if you're noticing that too, but in the middle school, um, I'm mostly a middle school and high school counselor. 
it's really, really hard for them to find some strength. Some of them know it and some of them don't. Um, that's why having the conversation really early on helps because then the kids that have had some RIASEC, they already know what their strengths are and they can continue to build on that. But for students that have really low self-esteem, it's hard for them to figure out what their strengths are. Um, and then values, what is something that you think is important? What do you want to do with your life as far as putting the value of the work that you do? So um, what's nice is that, like I said, Melanie, she embedded everything, all the links into that document and it's, so, it's super helpful. Um, it's a document you can use when you start the conversations with your students if it's one-on-one -on -one or if it's in a small group setting or even a classroom setting. Um, so they claim their RISEC letters, um, they do a scientific inventory and then they write down what they got even though they may not agree with it. And then they can claim which one they actually like. Um, and then why do we connect to these letters? Um, you know, you, you really have the kids reflect on that. Why did you get artistic? Do you think you're artistic? Um, so it's really, it's a nice working document you can use over several sessions with students. Um, and as you look at it, there's tools for elementary, for all, for middle school in each, um, in each category, strength, interests, and value. It's really, it's a, a gem. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, and then we also have elementary. This is where Janet, our, our elementary counselor, would talk about the ways that she implements RIASEC. Um, and what she has done is she had the kids have leadership team applications. So there were some kids that were making not the best decisions, but um, just trying to use whatever their strengths were, whatever their, she knew their code was and like, how do I get them to help me out? Oh, you're going to be the pump team. That's the team that likes to pump all the balls after recess. You're going to be the traffic squad. You're going to help us with kids that are crossing the street. So she, she does a wonderful, amazing job just trying to get the kids to see what are your RIASEC codes? What is your name? What is the best job that would fit for you based on your letters? Um, so if you see this template, this is something that she created. Um, and I believe, does that link work too? No, I, make a copy. I haven't, I haven't yeah. tried the link myself, but- um, Make a copy of the doc. Okay, me. and then they're, they're, um, they were the alligators. So that's why you saw that one. And then also she does a vision board. Um, and that school is Falcon. Yeah, is that what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then she did a vision board with the kids as well. And you can see her letters are CSE, so conventional, social, and enterprising. That's funny because those are my letters too, but not that order. <laughs> um, so then how can you, how can your school counselor help you? So then she wrote down, she does mindfulness lessons and she ha has coffee with the counselor. So just these are the things that for her letters, because she's social, she's wanting to help. Um, she's conventional. She likes organization. She's enterprising. So she's not afraid to get out there and talk to people. So this just kind of shows how she uses her vision board. And then she had students do a vision board. So I think this is an example of one of her students. Um, so realistic um, in investigative and artistic. So this person wanted to someday be a veterinarian. So I can make travel, so I can make money and travel. Um, I will use my eye to learn science and work hard. So I, I is the investigative, um, A is the artistic part, and then realistic is just wanting to be out there, right? Being outside and outdoors. So that's how she, as an elementary counselor, um, went and implemented it on her level. And you can always do this. I always feel like it's transferable. You can, if, even though the elementary kids do it, just like Melanie said, when, when they brought out all those little toys and things, and then all of a sudden you bring it to the middle school and they enjoyed it too. Yeah, they miss playing. Um, and I feel like even my high school kids would love to do that because they're not used to doing it. Um, so it'd be nice to bring something like that because now they could be creative in their artistic board and just using pictures and things that they like and just 
kind of like create a little bit right there. It's really nice. Oh, yes. And then also the virtual, um, using a virtual uh, room. When the pandemic happened, a lot of people made virtual places. So having a virtual room or having, a, having this on your website is also helpful so that students can just access this whenever they, they want to. Or say you have a substitute in the classroom and you're like, let's go on to the RIASEC and let's do a lesson. Let's just see. Um, one of the things that we, that one of the lessons that's already here. So uh, there's an example of that. And then meet the pro. So that last, the earlier we said, you know, parent involvement, interests, and kind of reaching out to the professionals. And so doing that is very important. And like I said, there's many ways, whether you have reached tap into the parents and in, in your community or um, at your sites, or even within your community to come in, you know, those old fashioned kind of career days, or even using that technology where the students can actually see inside their world of work. And that's been very um, a positive thing, both, like I said, we want them to understand what they do like and what they don't like. Like, we don't want them to just say, yes, I like to do that, I wanna be this, but you know what? I really didn't like that. That was not for me as also just as powerful as what they do like. So finding different ways there um, to, to, to meet that professional is the best way, route for our students. Um, we just kind of have, you know, career coaches. We like to say that everybody, every positive adult in this child's life can be their career coach, starting with actually the parents. We empower our parents like you are their first career coach. You talk to them first about what they want to do. What do you want to be when you grow up? And even when you're out and about with, with, with students or maybe a young student, you're just walking a campus or um, for our parents, you know, just what do you enjoy doing? If, you, if they're familiar with the RIASEC, what is that? You know, to get that interest thing is what activities do you lose track of time doing? Like, what do you all of a sudden, you know, two hours has gone by and, and what were you involved in? Um, and then you're out in the community with parents, you know, like what jobs are here? We're at, uh, you know, the park. What do you think are some careers here out at the campground or at the park? Um, and then if you meet somebody or see somebody on the TV, you can ask them, what do you think their RISEC or their themes are um, just to get their child kind of connecting the reasons why they would think that. So all different questions to ask. And like I said, um, any positive person in a child's life can be labeled as a career coach. It's not just for counselors. That's you guys have a lot going on. Our counselors are inundated with other things. We can start the conversation young. So when they get to you in the high school level, they're ready. They know their strengths, interests, values, and you just got to check in. What are you doing? Here we go. Give them some resources because they really have that really solid self-awareness. And that's what the goal is so that it's not falling 10th and 11th grade. It's, it's just getting too late for our children. So we want to start as young as five in kindergarten. And I know this is a backstory real quick. This is Sammy. He's in that same fourth grade class. In fact, you can see Lena in the back there. Park naturalist, he came to school in a suit um, and he connected that uh, he, he knew visitors were coming. So he wore a suit to school. We went and looked up. He became the superintendent of the national park that day for a simulation. Happened to meet our, our superintendent, Mr. Uh, Dr. David Miyashiro. They started talking and they realized they had the same RIASEC codes. And so then Dr. Miyashiro started to tell Sammy, well, yo, you're a superintendent of the park naturals today. I'm a superintendent of the schools. And so they began to have a conversation. By the end of that conversation, Sammy aspired to be and came back and said, I want to be a school superintendent. And I don't know many 10 year olds. In fact, me going into education probably didn't know what that was. Um, till I got into the field, but this young man, now eighth grader, our, our uh, superintendent just checked in with them last week at our middle school, and he says, I still want to be uh, superintendent, Dr. Miyashiro. So that's that, that process. Sammy explored and, and understood his set codes. He knew his strengths. He knew what, knows what he's good at. He explored and simulated a career. He got to be the superintendent, the head, kind of the one in charge for a day. He met a professional in the field and got a good practice. He gets practice in that field and now has that hope 
for his future, that he's someday going to be the, the superintendent of a school. And I've done the math and Sammy will be my boss someday. I'll have just a few years left and he'll be able to be my boss. So I always introduce him when I see him that he's my future boss. So um, that exposure, that adult involvement, interest, strengths, lens, you know, let's, let's forget about the deficits. Let's work on those strengths and interests for our children and we're going to have a whole nother world, but we want to give you some tools today to change that conversation when you, you know, you, we know the students you're going to have to pull in soon if, if trimester one's ending and semester one, you've got to pull them in, have that conversation, but maybe let's change it to strengths, interest, values instead of low attendance. If attendance isn't great. Your grades are, are low. They know that already. They already know that. So let's, let's change the conversation. So we hope these resources were of value reach out to either one of us and even janet if, if something's locked up she'll she'll tap out and tap back to you there's our emails we're we're nearby we're on twitter too if you just want to see some other resources but please reach out if any links are locked i'll unlock them right right away and just in your spare time if you have other uh, needs or wants there's more resources there for you to thumb through you can see how it is in classrooms there's videos and pictures a great video there to watch about a young man. Workforce Partnership aligns their priority sectors to the RISEC. So we even have that for that a conversation piece with students. When you go onto their website, what's out in my community and how does it connect to their RISEC in each of the priority sectors, energy construction, education, humanities, whatever it is. So more resources and more RISEC relevance there for you. And this is a quick activity you can do with kids. You know, they connect, how's a rice that connect my everyday life? Um, a little fun activity we you can do. And other than that, we, I think it's about time for almost 446. So yeah. any questions, uh, pop them in there. I'll check the chat real quick. If not, have a wonderful Wednesday. Um, and we look forward to answering any of your questions. So thank you for joining us. I also put an evaluation um, in the chat if they could fill that out. Awesome. And I also would like to share my screen real quick here um, so that they're able to take a screenshot of the. Um, um, I don't know if it is. I'm going to look. Uh, you guys take a screenshot of this if you need to have any um, for credits or if you need to take it back, your certificate to your workspace or whatnot. Please go ahead and take a screenshot of it. And other than that, um, thank you for attending our Go Virtual Career Pathways. And I'm unlocking the SIBJ questions.